What's good, Internet? And welcome to session 118 of Super GG Radio, where friends chat about video games and all things adjacent. I am your host and Microsoft Fridge enthusiast, Alex Arona. Nothing like a cold beer and an overheating obelisk. With me, as always, is future lich, Joel DeWitt. I don't understand that reference, Alex. Or is it that you do get the reference and you're trying to convince me otherwise so you can gain immortality? Getty, I don't get this one either. You can explain it later. Nope, you already explained it in the punchline. Yep. I don't understand. Also with us is mold monster Eric Getty Gettinger. Yeah, I am the mold. Oh. See, I get this one. I get this reference more than the other reference. Lastly, with us is forgotten Belmont Alec Parks. Jump! Whip attack! Whip attack! Throw across HOLY WATER! I did that to an old college roommate. Didn't work as well as I planned. Yeah, there's some holy water being blessed over here right now. There we go. <laughs> nice. Soon, Alec, you can defeat our other two co-hosts so we can replace them with better co-hosts. This week, we blast that at... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I don't love that. I don't love that. Are you sure you don't? No. Uh, uh, we play some really interesting early adopters. E three, more like meh three in the news, and play a freebie in the backlog. But first, early adopters, where we play alphas, betas, and games that rationalize owning tarot cards. Hold on, who's who botched my opening? Who changed it? Uh, which one? It was supposed to be a joke saying the second best game by that software company. Oh, that's for uh, Backlog. Yeah, that's... Yeah, you'll you'll have to re... We're an early adopter, sir. Yeah, no. I... <laughs> asking about the transition that I wrote. That was me. I botched it and tried the piece of Bath together after we thought Hartwell uh, was going to be on, and he bailed. Well, now we should take some pot shots at Hartwick before we talk about some video games. I mean, is it's that hard? Another dog killed his dog. It was really, really bummer news. I, uh, Wait, shit. Are you serious? No. Oh, no, thank no, God. No, whatsoever. He was in a dog fighting ring, and then the whole thing went down. It was, it was a thing. I don't think we're allowed to make those jokes anymore. First early adopter, Tarot, Theo's Quest. Uh, I. Tarot, Theo's Quest is. <laughs> Uh, I don't want to say it's Pokemon, but it's, it's kind of it's not, it's not collecting monsters and fighting that way, but the aesthetic and look is Game Boy esque in a way that uh, hit me with some '90s nostalgia very specifically. Mm-hmm. Specifically, and I, I really liked. It. Alex, I, I I got the Red uh, Mage vibe out of it. <laughs> Also, the Red Mage vibe. Uh, Red the, Mage uh, from Eight Bit Theater or a different Red Mage? From Final Fantasy, like Eight yeah, Bit yeah. Final Fantasy. You didn't read Eight Bit Theater, did you? I can't read. Spoilers. <laughs> Spoilers. All right. I uh, uh Joel, uh, you yeah. actually got you. Joel, you did the you did the early adopters this week. Well. Uh, well, Tell me some your thoughts on Tar- on Tarot Theo's quest. Saying I did this is a strong word. I posted out saying like, "Hey, Indy, send us your stuff." And uh, this independent developer uh, was the first one to respond, and I chose it. Figured why not? You know, let let the first person try. Uh, and we got Tarot Theo's quest. Uh, you're right, Alex. It has that sort of pixelated uh, classic style with the kind of you know, blank faces that Pokemon has, and e- even the the attack battles are that that way too. Like, it, it is structured as like half card game, half Pokemon battle, where you've got like a little avatar floating around because that's your element that your character has, and you choose and line up different moves. One's the past, one's the present, and one's the future. And you place a card in the uh, present from five cards, and then four, from four cards, pick the future. Each of those cards has 
like status effects or healing options stuff. So like part of the game is sequencing these cards in a way that you sort of predict things are going to go. Uh, so there's like after after you make your moves back and forth, there's not just the attacks that you make, but there's also like terrain damage. Did anybody else encounter that where like the terrain changed and then each round you had damage? Yeah, I found that very unpredictable, and and actually, I found it very difficult to to work around because uh, that there is a lot of tutorializing in a way that felt good, mm-hmm. but at the same time, that was one of the things that I don't feel was tutorialized. So it just seemed like during random battles, the terrain would change, and then I'd say, "Oh, it's misty." Oh, by the way, your character's move was lost in the mist. It's like, oh, okay, I guess that. Uh, that kind of takes that that uh, a random element out and, and you know makes that in so made uh, battles a little bit difficult more difficult to predict. I I did have a little bit of challenge uh, starting out. Um, I, I think that it does get a little better the more you kind of start planning out your next moves because uh, you'll sort of like see okay I'm I'm like half health right now so I need to sequence my future for heal damage and then. Uh, we'll put this one up front that says, okay, we're going to reverse status effects of the two characters. And, and you have to preempt and plan everything out uh, to use your intuition in order to, you know, dispatch the enemy. So, well, so know, to, now you brought up that you can replace the present. What's the difference between in if you replace the present or you just let the future become the present? Because that was something that I found very interesting. So if you put a card in the present, it has a 50% chance of happening. If you put something in the future and then wait a turn, it becomes the present. It's it. I was pretty sure it was 100% a chance of happening. Yes. I didn't actually use, utilize that, but yeah, that's what it was. See, I only did. I only put things in the future, and I just kept waiting turns ahead to try to plan out that working. Just because I felt like uh, I had bad, I had bad uh, RNG in in that in that case where I felt like I was flipping a coin and always kind of missing with those mm-hmm. present moves. So I just started moving things in the future more more than anything else. Okay. There are other cards though, and so okay, so there's two phases. There's the past, present, and future phase where you lay out cards. That will give you buffs, stat buffs, or debuffs, which I thought was kind of confusing, where you get uh, damage to your character. Um, I, and I was like, why would you uh, initiate damage to yourself? Which is where a little confusing to me. But then you get the second phase where you actually attack, defend, do or do some magic. And you could turn into different arcana to uh, do different spells as well. So you got different Arcana transformation cards that you can place, and you would transform into another form to do different types of damage, whether it be like a di- like water or elemental, like you know earth. You would you could change to the different elemental damage types because there's that rock paper scissors, water versus ground and stuff like that. Yeah, but uh, I never I didn't find a ton of t- uh, reason to defend as much when I was always trying to like get to the end to attack. But again, I lost a couple fights. I was not great at both predicting my heals going off because there were times that like the terrain would take over and I, all of a sudden my character was stunned or something like that and I couldn't heal. Uh, but I like the idea that it's trying to do something different. I like the fact that these, these past, present, future cards do play into a strategy that you have to watch for and account for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I did use defend once, and I only found it useful like when you're at the you know clutches of death, and yeah. you need to just blunt that damage while you wait for that one card to show up to save you. But uh, yeah, I mean battling is one part of it. The other part is the traipsing along the overworld, which in this case it's really just sort of dotted lines up to different pathways where you encounter different people along the way and. Uh, did you guys get to the university? No, I didn't get that. I didn't get no. that yet. Okay. Okay, so it's basically just a room. It's a house, uh, basically a building. And my kids are taking on a project right now. Um, nice. So the 
it's just basically like little snippets of information and details about tarot and uh, magic and, and things like that. The, the world they're trying to build. I, I got the sense that this game, this developer, is very interested in telling a story with the idea of tarot and magic. Uh, and so far the game has sort of like the the struct the skeletal structure of a game but it's being used almost like a a medium to tell a specific lesson or something okay and i i felt like the characters were kind of had good conversations that ga- that built the world into life that you know like you were t- you you sent a screenshot of uh just an NPC waxing about how we're all uh, slaves to consumerism and just kind of mm-hmm. going off in this tangent and that it, it kind of really made me laugh. You're like, I wonder how this guy really feels. And uh, just in general, I found there was a lot of representation for people of color in the game. That's one thing that struck, that stood out to me was that yep. your main, your main character is a person of color. There's a lot of NPCs that were people of color. And that felt, at least to me as, as a person of color, it felt good to see that they kind of brought in all walks of life uh also okay um the thing that'll sell me you want to sell me on a game put in some damn good music and it i gotta tell you that battle music sounded like it was kesha i (laughs) i really really like kesha Mm -hmm. and that got me all sorts of hyped i was like oh god another battle get me into this music i want to download this i want to put it on my spotify and i want to go running to this this will be on my running mix let's do that so I do have a question since yeah. I didn't get too far into this. I got to play a little bit. Um, so one of the key elements does seem to be deck building. As you said, it's not really a Pokemon in that you're collecting monsters, but you are expanding your tarot deck. Is there a point at which you get to do further customization of the tarot deck, or is it always just you get new cards and bam, they go in, and you don't have any say in what's in there? I didn't play anything in the demo that specified that. The, the way I, I read it... I, w- I will say that you can equip certain Arcanas to transform into. Yeah. The, the whole idea is that your character is working with the water element. I think the idea was that there would be like boss battles akin to the gym leaders in Pokemon that had different elements, and then once you beat them, you would get cards of that element. But uh, nothing explicitly shown in the gameplay no there was definitely again when we are when you would fight different npcs they would have whole other cards i saw one where someone was celebrating and i'm like i wonder what that card does and it was cool there was a little confetti in the air (laughs) and uh that got me pretty hyped so i was like i want that card from that person that would be good so did you guys do the fortune telling yes there's fortune telling where they will lay out three cards and and this is just an npc conversation but you have to. You, they want to know uh, you to do a tarot reading for them, and you have to try to select what you think is the accurate reading from the three cards presented, mm-hmm. and that could lead to different conversations throughout the story. So that was good. Uh, yeah. What did you think of it, Joel? I actually. So I, I had to play this twice because I got part way through and then it crashed. Which it, it's oh, a beta. No. That, that's stuff that happens. Uh, and I got a second take. So I, I did that reading thing twice. I did selected the third one. And when I came back, I was like, well, I'm just going to check number two. And the text was a little different, but it was still, like, the same, like, happy <laughs> day down reading. It felt like that uh, they, you know, were read correctly or something. So, Okay. I think I got uh, – you got a card or an item from it. So yeah. there was that. Also, there is uh, a little mini game when you come to something in the terrain that you need to – bypassing a river you could use your water power to create a bridge but by doing so uh it would give you uh like a pentagram with different points on it and it would go and there all the points are colored light blue blue red green and it would go it would go black and you would see little sparkles with the colors but in a sequence and you have to memorize what the sequence is so we saw four sparkles one was yellow one was bright blue one was dark red and then you have to go and click on the the pentagram to get the right symbols and then you would do your spell to get across the river which i again it took me a second to figure that one out but i thought that was a, another interesting mechanic that you could use the the tarot cards and your spells for that that's a roundabout way of saying it's a game of simon yeah <laughs> but i mean yeah. 
<clears throat> yeah, it's more about the colors. And the thing is, was, I thought it was actually where the spaces were on the pentagram, and they're not. So I was uh, at that, that's what I tried to do the first time. I'm like, okay, from here to here to here. No, it's not. It's the colors. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was uh, Tarot, Theo's Quest. I really enjoyed that. It's a good Pokemon aesthetic. Bump and beats. Uh, and uh, overall, something, an interesting take uh, over at Itch.io. The next game we played, The Last Soul, over at Steam. The Last Soul, there's a prologue demo uh, for uh, The Last Soul. This is a shooter platformer. Uh, uh, their humanity is going extinct, and they put humanity's uh, being into a little robot, and you are trying to escape shooting your way out while also platforming and doing abilities like dashing, double jumps, and the like. Uh, just want to put this out there uh, first and foremost. Again, you want me to like your indie game. Fully orchestrated soundtrack, and it was phenomenal. <laughs> It was orchestrated. It was awesome. It was awesome. No pixel game, which again, I like. I like it all. I like all. I like chip tunes. I like um, the orchestra. I like rock music. Whatever. But uh, I thought they did a really good job, and uh, this one kept me int- entertained. Uh, Alec, you played the Last Soul most recently. <laughs> yeah, I got um, a little bit of time in right before we started the podcast. Okay, and what was your initial impression of the Last Soul? Oh, I, you know. It took me a little bit to kind of figure out what was going on, uh, but I really enjoyed the platforming aspect of it. It wasn't punishing, but it was uh, still required some accuracy. Like, if you fell, you didn't feel like you were playing the White Castle in Hollow Knight and Yeah, this isn't Mega Man pits Pits of Death. Right. No Pits of Death. Um, the enemies you did you have the shield that you can pop up to kind of protect yourself, but them shooting it or you shooting it will ruin its uh, strength, it's integrity. Yeah, its integrity, and you then have to time either using the shield or other environment things to fire back and duck and hide again. It was very much a... um, It reminded me of Gears of War, to be honest. (laughs) Except... Oh, no. (laughs) Well, What do you mean? Gears of War was all about get behind cover, pop up, and shoot. No, it was about rows, guns, and talking in a really deep voice. Jack, rip that door. (laughs) <laughs> Ripping the door, Jack. That, that that's amazing, Alex. Because I played it completely different. I I did a run and done kind of style, and and tried to use really a lot of bullet time. Because they okay. have bullet time where it'll slow down everything, the shooting from them. But you're running at normal speed, and so I found a lot of success there. But what I found alternatively to what you said, to me, the shield always seemed to go off too quickly and i'm not sure if i was clipping it sometimes when hitting back at a an enemy or what but i found that flimsy at least they also said you could use it as a platform i I never tried that though yeah Yeah. you could i I found there was some jumps that were a little longer than i would have liked so i started jumping across even just a Mm. there was one enemy that i felt when you defeat uh, the way i played it was pretty run and gun i was taking hits to the face but if you destroy an enemy you get your health back that's kind of how you play it, mm-hmm. but, at wow. least for me. But there was one enemy that wasn't going down fast enough, not as fast as it was hitting me. And uh, that's kind of where I end up just platforming over and around by using the shield. But you, the way I understood it, you're supposed to kill everything that's in there. I mean, they tell you to do whatever. I mean, they can tell you whatever they want. They let you move forward. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So, yeah, uh, Joel, tell me more about how you played, though. Uh, so I'm, I'm not even sure if I got to a whole level's worth of game, but the there's a lot of platforming through it, and you have to you know start push down the controller uh, left stick 
to do a run, but you don't just click it, you have to hold it. So I had a hard time remembering it and I had to work on my uh, muscle memory on that to get acquainted with that. I also found that some of the platforms kind of melted into the background. So there were some cases where the jumps, you know, were supposed to be a certain pattern. Uh, I had to sort of take a leap of faith that because it was melted in the background, I couldn't tell the difference that it uh, would be there to save me. And there was another point that I ran to where it looked like it was a jump for platforms, but there, there was just a ground. There was no pit or hole. <laughs> so I, I took the leap of faith there and then landed and then realized there was somebody walking in a space that I thought there was no platform at and went, oh, this is all solid ground. That but happened oh, to me too. Yeah. <laughs> Overall, I liked what they're working with though. Like I, I could see this being a decent sized uh, puzzle platformer with some some battling in there. It seems more battle focused, but hopefully there'd be some sort of puzzle solving and things in there too. Yeah, it, I, and I already there is another little mini robot that's kind of leading you throughout, you know, the path, trying to get you out of there and trying to help you. And I that I thought was kind of that I thought was kind of cool because they were. It was very comedic. They had a good back and forth. I mean, well, not a back and forth because your character is a silent protagonist to a certain extent. But right. I thought the way that he was talking to you, like, oh, great, you made it. Totally didn't think you would. Thought you were going to die. Glad you <laughs> made it. Let's keep going. And it just kind of kept moving that way. Mm-hmm. And I thought that that made uh, me laugh in it and uh, kept it fresh, kept it going. So. Oh, yeah. E- even the... The level names were silly. The level I, you know, you played, or the one after was called "What the Heck." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah. it's that fun sort of like, you know, tongue in cheek, like oh, we know what we're actually saying, kind of thing. Now, uh, surprise, surprise! Uh, this one was only for me and for Joel and I, but we also played Tunic. Tunic. Yes. Um, I, I, I will uh, throw out a little bit of history. This was one of uh, Super GG Radio's day one. Hey, we should start a podcast where we beta test games. Uh, let me make a list of all the podca- or the games that we should try to see if we can beta test. Tunic was on that list, and I reached out, and uh, we did not get in contact with them to get a copy of Tunic. So, But they put out a demo for the short period of time, I think a couple days, like a week, uh, on Xbox, Mm-hmm. And uh, since I bought uh, Joel's old Xbox, I was able to play Tunic. Yes. So th- this is one time where I'll forgive the, the verbiage. This is a Zelda-like. Uh, <laughs> it, it, is seems known, to... it is known as Zelda like a fox within the, the, the gaming industry. Wait, what? That, that's a decent nickname for that. Uh, but it's, it's sort of that... You know how Link's Awakening, the remake, looks like where everything was kind of slick and then there was like fuzziness around the world and everything was kind of blocky-ish? Did you guys remember seeing any of that? A little claymation-like. Yeah, yeah. This is like akin to that. I mean, there's not not as much detail in the backgrounds. Uh, The character is a little less defined, too. But that is basically what it is, is that sort of isometric plane. You're traipsing along the land. You search for things like a stick or a sword to use as a weapon and there are also sort of different collectibles and chests around the place because the way they described it was being a slice of the game where you could like try several different things and so you find the weapons you go down fight enemies find caves that have treasure or traps then uh there was actually a boss yeah. Did you run across that? Yeah, there was a boss that was just like this, I think, big white monstrosity that was swinging around like a big uh, chain ball thing. But I had so much trouble. I did not kill that thing. Because well, he hits like a tank. You know, he took half added, my life. They added uh, in this what seems like a soul, like some souls mechanics where there is a, there's a roll and there's... um. There's uh, refillable potions and bonfires, yeah. and in that case, I feel like that's where the boss kind of hits on that level. Is that there is like a, you they have a really good left trigger targeting system, which is great. Mm-hmm. But uh, I feel like they also threw in the you got to, uh, you really got to duck and roll. You really got to get you got to make your hit your hits count, and then get out as soon as you, you see something else coming your way. So right. I, th- 
I felt like that was a very a very good way to represent that, especially in such a charming package. That thing is really pretty. Yeah. Tunic is really pretty, guys. That's where that's where I would go with that. Is that it, it's it's just charming. The character is a little fox in a green tunic, and he's swinging a little stick. And then you get a sword, and he's swinging his little sword, and he's just walking along, happy on his adventure. And I wanted to be there with him. I wanted to be for him. I was pro this little this little fox doing his thing. I wanted him to be happy. I wanted to love him forever. I can't believe this week you guys played Pokemon, Mega Man, and Zelda. It feels like it's just a time machine. Yeah. Everything just, old is new again. I was going to say, we're just starting the cycle. I, I, I have heard that apparently mom jeans are back in style. Yep. For you or Ooh, for yep. your wife? My wife. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm not going to kink shame here. Yeah, Alex sure, might. Sure. Well, anyway, I think Tunic is great. Uh, Joel, you texted me. He goes, I could listen to this music all day. Yes. We we have we have a lot of games with great music this uh, episode. Like, that, it is just so chill. There's some nice sort of piano trilling about. I mean, it's, it is like flower if flower had a structured orchestrated soundtrack i there are games that have uh i'll play them and i will just like turn the volume down and just like listen to a podcast or be watching tv and just kind of playing along and soundtracks kind of get soundtracks can get grating after a while especially if you're playing it for so long so when something hits me with like some good beats or a really well produced orchestra or this really calming rhythm to it I'm all for it. it. It puts me more in the vibe with with the game. You know, when I'm not listening to it, I'm kind of a little disjointed from it. I'm just kind of playing it to play it and less engaged with it as a full, complete experience. And I feel like Tunic is a full, complete experience. I would want if I if I, if it was on PC, I'd play it on PC. I'd put on headphones and I'd be like, "Go away, world. We're just gonna tunic it up." And that's that's what it is. So yeah, it's very meditative. It's it's very chill. You know, it's it's definitely... even fighting enemies. I was pretty calm with it. Right. Well, I mean, it's, it's. You say we do the sort of dodging and counterattack stuff, but even then, it is very, very chill and kind of relaxed. You, you have to really pigeonhole yourself in a corner to be in trouble for most of it. And again, I like the little hidden secrets hiding behind waterfalls or turning the right corner where the camera is just a little bit off and you find a hidden hidden path. That's all very fun. Now, uh, I do love me some Zelda likes. And uh, I'm going to add this one to the list. I'm going to be watching out for it. And I think everyone should, too. This week was a great week in the early adopters. Taros Theo's Quest, The Last Soul, Tunic. Getty, if you were going to play one of these, which one would you do? Whichever one lets me blast that ass, like you tried to say at the beginning of the podcast. <laughs> I'm getting us out of here. Let's take a break. I hate you, Getty. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hey, news. <laughs> no innuendo this week. Just E3. Oh, yeah. Wow. It was E3 this week, and uh, there was a lot going on. I'm the only one that watched the press conferences because everyone else has a full time job or kids <laughs> or a life. It's useless. I watched Nintendo. I have all three, damn it. I watched Nintendo. Yep. I just ignored well all, three. all three. Yeah, well I just doing. ignored all three. <laughs> all three suffered. They knew what they got into. First piece of news Proto Corgi played on this show, uh, releasing August 26th. 26th. Must purchase Full for the year. Release. Joel. Not- must okay. purchase. All right. I'll, I'll Proto Corgi. Make time do, for Proto Corgi. Do you think I can get away with giving that to my wife for her birthday? Even yes. She does not play games. Do it. But does she like corgis? Who doesn't love corgis? They have We're, the cute little is. heart butts. We're doing the whole buying a bowling ball for Marge for her birthday <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> With the name. Yes. With the name Homer in it. 
Uh, next piece of news. Castlevania, the Netflix anime, getting a spinoff because uh, they ended the show. The new spinoff will essentially be Rondo of Blood. Nice. So. Was that uh, Richter? Yes. Okay. That's mostly the news. He said it was going to be a spinoff with Richter and Maria, which was Rondo of Blood. Ooh. I'm for that. Yeah. Next, we're going to go through the E3 Super Breakdown. Minute by uh, minute. <laughs> minute by minute. First, uh, Devolver ate a bunch of hot dogs. They were chili cheese dogs, to be fair. Uh, I'm, You know, I really kind of wish I was joking, but that was a really, really entertaining part where uh, one of the girls from the ladies from Devolver was giving a speech about how awesome Devolver is while eating multiple chili cheese dogs. Like, still okay. talking through the, the meat. That sounds <laughs> disgusting. Talking through it the meat. It was talking through the meat. There is... I'm currently in a, a Twitter thread talking about how uh, we think that we all love that lady now because uh, that was amazing. It was amazing. But actual super, uh, E3 breakdowns. Uh, the beginning event gave us Elden Ring, the next uh, Souls game. Tiny Tina, the Dungeons and Dragons game. Get you hype? How hype? I'll play it. That's not hype enough. You can't play it. Okay. Metal Slug Tactics. I am very hyped because I love Metal Slug, and making it a tactics game just makes sense. Just makes sense. Uh, Death Stranding Director's Cut. If there ever needed to be a game that needed a director's cut, it was Death Stranding. Are you serious? I feel like. As weird as it got, it's funnier knowing that he left something on the cutting room floor. It's funnier How? to think that he, someone said, okay, you're being too weird, when it was so weird to begin with. On a scale of 1 to 10, how likely are you to buy it? None. Oh, he's None. getting None. I played that game once, and once is enough. <laughs> Whether he knows it or not. Against, he, I have nothing already... against it. it I'm, I'm, I'm richer for the experience. I just... That's not one I, I feel like I need again. I would Your argue GameStop that's... pre-order says otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> Ubisoft Mario plus Rabbid Sparks of Hope a sequel. Funny enough, it's weird that this got leaked by Nintendo, and when they leaked Mario plus Rabbids the first time. Ubisoft I'm just here for the so. Rabbid Luma. That was, yep. that was pretty good. To, I, it, that, it's messed up. To be fair, if Mario's if Nintendo's gonna let you use first party ip in your game they can do whatever the hell they want with the announcement did you see guys like i'm not sure if it's fully through the game or parts they let you have like open terrain walking space instead of the grid lines oh really looked, yeah it looked like an interesting little hook did you so. not play the first one i did not but i was okay. oh, wait i played for like i played for like an hour I, I was pretty sure it was all grid wasn't it no, there was moving around sections quite a bit. Yep. Okay. You would move they from featured it like it was a big deal. Part to part, and then you would uh, in, do an encounter, which was XCOM. Hmm. XCOM. Okay. XCOM. Uh, Xbox and Bethesda, Like a Dragon coming to Game Pass, and Starfield also coming to Game Pass, Game Pass Day 1. Starfield. It's a cool trailer about something I have no clue what it's going to be about. Skyrim in space. That's space true. rim, space rim. I don't not know. sure I, don't I like that. I think we can say that on the radio. <laughs> let's, not, let's not say space rim anymore. Let's Good not. thing we're not on the radio. We're on the <laughs> internet. <laughs> we're we're just uh, taking the name. Yeah. Joel, we're on like episode title two. We're not even halfway. So enjoy space rim. Please stop. I'm not Square doing Enix. space rim. I, uh, Final Fantasy action RPG Souls like Stranger of Paradise. I will be playing the demo. I will be discussing it next week. Oh, yours uh, didn't corrupt, unlike everybody else's. They fixed it two days later. Oh, okay. There you go. Also, Guardians of the Galaxy game looks like a lot of fun. I'm very excited about it. Uh, specifically because they give you conversation trees that will lead to different story paths. But the conversation trees are very, very funny, and like have like have a good, uh, like a good punchline in between with each one. Also, his specials are '80s pop songs, 
So whenever he does an ultimate ability, an 80s pop song comes on, so I'm kind of bump, pumped for that. And it just looks bright and colorful. We, we really are in sort of the renaissance of movie tie-in games, aren't we? Well, this is supposed to be like the Avengers game where it, like the characters are completely different. They act different, they look different. Yeah. yeah. If you Rocket look if if you look at uh, look at look at the animation for this game, Star-Lord uh doesn't look I, I don't want to say he do, he looks like a douchebag, but he kind of looks smart. Where's, where's this going? Just say he doesn't look like anything door. like you know what? Just let's parts keep and going. recreation. It doesn't look yes. like anything like parts and recreation. Yeah. What's his name? Yeah, but it still looks fun, and I'm very interested. Uh, it turns out the Nintendo Switch version will be cloud only, so that's an interesting. Uh, they're doing <laughs> right. a lot more. <laughs> what? That's that's a great idea. <laughs> well, they're they're also doing um, plague plague of innocence or plague tale. Plague tale. Yeah, that's gonna be a, a, so. It's just those are those are interesting pieces of news that they're really trying to bring the more cloud gaming. Uh, Trey from Nintendo Maiden said uh, Control was completely playable. Mm. Mm. That that is a mm. that's high praise. It's playable. Mm. Well, I mean, you got to think of like Control is a really graphically intensive game to all those who have played it. It is a very graphically intensive game. To play it on the PS4, going from the pause menu to gameplay is a stuttery, stuttery mess. Is so, the, uh, so I, it, I can imagine it, a cloud version being similarly as stuttery and not more so. I'm, I'm saying that's pretty good. I don't know. I, uh, I always thought the way I understood it was that when you're running it through the cloud, the hardware at the back end... It needs to be powerful enough to run the game of the best setting. And then it's just a matter of having the internet connection be stable and consistent and fast enough to stream it to your box. Yep. But and that's what and that's what I'm saying is that Nintendo can handle that mm-hmm. in a way that seems relatively decent, at least from well, for for all intents and purposes. Uh, Devolver Digital, uh, their press conference we have inscription which we may be talking about this one in a future episode. Uh, inscription from the creator of Pony Island. Looks to be a card a card deck builder with some really creepy tie-ins and also because of its Pony Island uh, roots has some uh, fourth wall breaking mechanics that kind of mess with you that way. And then Demon Throttle, uh, a little uh, pixel art 2D shooter from the makers of Gato Roboto getting a physical only release. Uh, the line was three hours to get one. I'm probably going to try again later. And right. I also saw the Wizard with a Gun. That looks pretty fun. Wizard uh, with a Gun? Yeah. Yeah, it looks. Um, they're saying it's a. It's like Don't Starve. Okay. So more survival like two D, but the the art looks very like like a you're playing a cartoon, which is excellent. Yeah, it looks fantastic. I'm excited for that one. Uh, next, Nintendo, uh, we got Metroid Dread, Zelda Ooh. Game and Watch, which had uh, Zelda One, Zelda Two, and the Game Boy uh, Link's Awakening, Breath of the Wild Two, and WarioWare. No, nobody's buying that Game and Watch, right? You are. <laughs> It's a fifty dollar no. no, thing I'm that not. just makes me angry if, when they could have released Metroid Prime Trilogy. If I ever did it, it'll be because Kelly wants to give it to me so we can have one. <laughs> There's that bowling would, ball again. <laughs> I have never played Zelda one or two. Yeah, so two's generally not considered to be one of the greatest in the series. I know. But One I mean, place. that would be a fun curiosity to have it accessible without emulation. It's yeah, it's different. I guess it's it's different than other Zelda games because it's this weird uh, hybrid of the top-down overworld and then going into dungeons and levels where you're doing side-scrolling attacks, and it's very, very uh, stiff. Yeah, I am error. Also, the Breath of the Wild two trailer gave us hardly anything new. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I, I didn't expect much, but like, okay, we, we know that there's flying islands now, and we know that there is a flying castle, and that's it. 
I saw a theory that somebody put out there, and I wish I would have paid attention to who, but that you're actually playing as Ganon in Breath of the Wild 2, because they never show the face in the trailer. And mm. some other things that I never, I didn't go through the full reasoning behind it. I was just like, oh, okay. That, There's that a lot of theories. Cool. That, yeah. that sounds like internet bullshit. Sorry. <laughs> They, they made a the YouTube internet, video so. on it, and I don't. I did not watch it. Must be true. Must be true. Uh, also, for Getty, Capcom Resident Evil Eight DLC. Uh, people were clamoring for that game, uh, especially their uh, nine-foot uh, goth mommy. So, they said that they would make some DLC for that game. You hyped? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't play the DLC for. Seven. I don't know if I'd play it for eight. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Joel, you also said that you would like to. You just want to say uh, Shin Megami Tensei Five. So I'll. Yeah. It's. I only said. I'm not going through all these. Screw that. Read the uh, whole list <laughs> one by I, one. I'm I, stoked I for it. SMT with you. I'm right up there. So is is Shin Megami Tensei just basically like super serious persona? Yes, but less slice of life. Less like hanging out with your bros and. Okay. doing the whole thing that uh, way uh, it is okay. but i didn't but like the way it looked in the framing of the you know story and stuff so i'm i'm curious uh advance wars one and two reboot that's that's definitely my uh wheelhouse you're gonna pay 60 Bailey bucks Wood. for it hell yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i don't see why you wouldn't i uh you know that's that's something i liked enough uh to do that uh ass no it's not that no it wasn't too late uh Yudin Chronicle, which is actually something on the Xbox uh presentation. It, it kinda looks Saga Frontierish in its okay. style. It, well, like mixing that with the kind of uh Octopath Traveler kind of uh vo- motif. So that was cool. Um also, who saw the Outer Worlds two trailer? I did. And it was it was actually uh, that is something that not a lot of people reported on, and I was kind of confused why no one was talking about Outer Worlds two. I mean, they even say in the trailer that this is just a flash trailer and probably has nothing to do with the actual game. Just want to let people know we're making it. But still, yeah, it, it was very tongue in cheek because like the whole time it's just a narrator parroting the stuff that trailers usually have so it was just like it starts with a uh, prestige narrative voice and then it opens up to a big world that's lush and beautiful david said this is the protagonist looking far away into the distance will you go to that area probably not do we see the protagonist's face hell no (laughs) really just kind of playing it up of like what a a real silly kind of uh thing like like a trailer like that would be but they at least say that they're making it which is like pretty hype for me because i didn't really i don't really like you know fallout and skyrim's those land lose me because they're too open and outer worlds kept my attention really well because of how it kind of kept kept everything contained so i think that that outer worlds 2 is a good one uh what else you got joel no i'm good <laughs> uh, nothing else no, no. I, like I said, I, I wrote a big list, list. List. Some of them are obvious. Uh, you know, other ones like twelve minutes. That was when I saw that spot that looked interesting. Uh, and uh, Diablo two. Like I was surprisingly like caught interested in that too. It looked decent. Can, Joel, can we talk about how uh, they put Kazuya from Tekken into Smash Brothers, and it's almost like Smash Brothers wants to be a real fighting game. I mean, to find real fighting game, it has been <laughs> in the esports scene uh, for, let's see. What's for the time many, for this? many years. 50, minute fifty six. Uh, yes, it's been, in the, but that, but it's it's a brawl. The, the, it's got its own genre. It's a brawler. It's not. A fighting oh, okay. Game. Oh, so when yeah. you say fighting, you mean like um, more combo based, more strictly real, realistic, if you will, uh, sort of thing like when you think of street fighter as a f- yes fighter okay yeah which you know what they should just th- you know throw in a virtual fighter you know fighter and i'm in like we got like we got everybody well i mean where's dead or alive right we need dead or alive representation that's what we need. no we don't need we don't Stuart. need jiggle physics alec Get he out already we gotta have jiggle physics. No, you already have jiggle physics you already have jiggle physics right kirby's <laughs> in there yeah mm. 
Kirby's got some good jiggle physics. Uh, there's another one, Joel. Another title. Jigglypuff jiggle also has good jiggle physics. Oh, yes. There we go, Joel. We got titles for days. Going on to freebie. So E3 was actually like a big... Uh, it was a lot. It was a full week. And uh, I watched it all. I, I, I definitely think that you guys should check out at least the Devolver Conference because that was... Uh, that that kind of kept me entertained, at least for a little bit, because uh, going from game to game trailer and then throwing in uh, occasional obnoxiousness at the Adult Swim level was pretty good. Uh, uh, going on to freebies... Sonia, the great adventure over at Indie Gala, Absolute Drift at uh, Good Old Games. Gog, Absolute Drift is a, is a good, uh, it's a fun little racer there. Um, Hell is Other Demons, uh, Epic Game Store, and Overcooked Two at the Epic Game Store. Oh man, Overcooked Two is uh, very good. It's a very good game. Uh, I am not reading this outro, Getty, because that is all sorts of offensive. I'm going to say that uh, E3 was a good old time, and now thinking about that developer conference, I'm going to go get a chili dog. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. And we're back. Back with the black... Well, oh, man. Yep. That one bad. We're back. That was, that was the first one of the year. We're back. <laughs> back with the Backlog Blog, where we play games that are free. Freebies. Alex, I remember my first beer. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the non-alcoholic <laughs> beer. It is delicious. Really messes with you. Athletic Brewing. Awesome. Okay. So... We played one of the... Last week, we had a freebie called Missed Messages. Uh, It had been shouted out to me on Twitter as a game that was free, but also that it had a lot of good messaging behind it. And I will say that it is actually a very serious game. It uh, is roughly 30 minutes or so, but I I did multiple endings. Joel, did you do multiple endings? I mean, the the endings sort of winnow into each other as you go through, don't they? Because it feels like... It feels like one long narrative that you're reaching towards that. Well, I think that if you you get an ending and then you play again, it kind of leads into the next. Like, it kind of leads into starting over again. Mm-hmm. So um, you uh, you are a girl who is getting her PhD in what seems like advanced math mathematics, or like computer programming, something like that. Yeah. And uh, you have basically a, a mouse interface that you can click around with your surroundings. You click on the T, she'll tell you about how she likes to hang out and drink tea or, you know, notes from her roommate, her, her room. And then you can go and click on your work and you're like, oh, should I work? But I also want to be, oh, I got a text message. I want to answer this text message on my laptop. And it, you can kind of interface how you want. But doing those things will lead your story to different directions. Uh, and and do you want to talk more about this, Joel? About how what, what how the game kind of led you? I will say I will say this does talk to me a little bit more, and uh, I assume you too, Joel, as mm. uh, a wannabe hipster in college. <laughs> Your inner emo. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, at, we were we we wanted to be hipsters. That's who we were. Yeah, sure, that's true. That's true. It uh, it it, it definitely sort of like starts as the kind of uh, twee. Uh, indie movie style kind of story it is about a girl who is roommates with a shyish girl and they then may. and then she uh gets in a random i am conversation with some girl whose username was just goth goth girlfriend yeah uh, so <laughs> it's and, and the interactions on screen because it starts as like an i am chain and then the first I am is like a picture of Dodd with sunglasses, and then you can send a meme back of like something else, and it'll be chatter, but it'll also be mixed in with this stuff. And one of the things you can choose, one of the responses you can choose, it is just like Shrek. I don't know why, but Shrek. But because Shrek is love. <laughs> Shrek is life. But uh, let's not let's not go down this road. Yeah, no, please. But it's you know. It's it's handling a lot of topics about 
self-harm, grief, uh, suicide. Uh, so be mindful of that if you're going to go through experiencing this. It, it is very much just a interactive story. So also don't expect too much in terms of interactive gameplay outside of just clicking responses or, or uh, choices in speech. But it it does a great job of sort of like layering over, without spoiling it, layering over replays to have them make sense within context of each other. Uh, it, it's hard to say too much without spoiling it. The, the only thing I'll say is just, you know, if, if it's free out there, still get it. It's a 30-minute play, maybe, maybe a little longer, depending on how you want to play it. But it's a... Uh, it's it's an interesting experience, and I'm glad I played it. Well, excuse me, one second. <coughs> okay, that's at the one hundred five mark. Thank you, Joel. Mm-hmm. <coughs> yes, and and so it does it does deal with a lot of those serious notes, and also is representation in the lgbtq community and i think i think really what it comes down to is that the messaging throughout which is that you know you shouldn't be afraid to make friends check on your friends Mm -hmm. really kind of look to sometimes to see those and the game's called missed messages and you think like oh they missed some text messages or anything like that but actually it's not it's more about the the things that people your friends the ones you're close to are trying to say and you don't catch on to those. So mm-hmm. it is always good to just kind of be mindful and listen when people are talking to you. And just kind of look for those warning signs. Look for those things. Engage with your friends. You know, there uh, There is a shirt that I want that just says, like, check on your friends. And that's all it says. And that's that's kind of what it means in this kind of game. Because you have different choices that lead to different varying stories and even like with the first setting I got, I went on a date and I did all this stuff. And then you realize that that wasn't the story. That was the, wasn't the story at all. You went on a date and that it's fine, but that's not the story. And the point is, is that you're supposed to talk to your friends, check on your friends, find out what's going on. Just really listen, spend time. Don't always kind of be in your own world. Try to be there for others and i think that that's a really good important message so that's all that's all i think i think that mixed missed messages does does well with very little it does it's a very short experience but i felt like that it did it told it told me something that i felt was important and i definitely took away from that saying like you know check on your friends make sure everyone's okay you know how would you have a rough day today we should talk about it you know yeah and you you can kind of look back at situations when you were younger where you were in kind of sort of tough situations like that where you might know somebody who did self-harm or you heard about someone else's sort of challenges and uh you know it, it sort of it brought me back a little bit to to people i knew like that yeah so i don't want it you know it's not it's not a downer what it is is that it's a it's an eye-opener and i think it's important that people definitely uh, I think it's a very good experience that people would be brighter to check out and feel to feel to be part of to be something different. You know, I you could bring these games to anybody and have them experience this and then have them walk away with something that's a little bit more in depth and a little bit just a feeling of, oh, you know, I now see what it's trying to say. That's all. You get that. So we just wanted to play a little bit of one of our freebies. Because uh, we kind of tout all of the freebies every week, and I think that it's important that we do take some time to try them out and tell you what to think. What do we think of these freebies every week? And I thought Miss Messages was a good one, uh, and I think I'm going to recommend it to several other people. What do you think, Joel? Oh, I've already uh, sent it to Brock from Damien... Not Damien Fitz. <laughs> uh, damage Boost. <laughs> <laughs> damage Boost. So uh, I'm waiting to see how he feels. Yeah. I think it's a good one, so... I think he said uh, verbatim, oh, it looks like this game will make me cry. So uh, he's he's ready for the feels. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, now, moving on to the next segment. Joel, did you want to do No, I, I, I think we're running a little long as the E3 this week. Why don't we 
transition into one last thing. One last thing. Where we say one last sentence, one last statement, sending us into the weekend and you the listener into the weekday. For me, uh, I am, I have been kind of going, I got to tell you guys, I've been going from kind of review to review, getting uh, giving different pieces for different people and just writing these freelance reviews for fun. And a- as of the last couple, I've been like, okay, once this one's done, I'm going to take a little break and I'm going to go. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna pl- I'm gonna play Monster Hunter. <laughs> I'm gonna finish Near Replicant. I'm gonna, these games are like games. I'm like, man, I am I am real deep into, and I want to be deeper into Persona Five Royal. I'm like, I just want to be, I want to wade, you know, nipple deep into the waters that is Persona Five Royal. He's got fifty again. hours left. Don't listen to him. <laughs> but I want to be in that fifty hours up to up to here. You know what I mean? But. I have another review, and it's really long, and I'm kind of dreading that. And I just keep like, I've played, I've had it for an hour, or, you know, I've had it for I've had it for a week, and I've played like two hours, and I'm sitting here like every time I stop, I just go, you know, those games are just waiting there, they're just over there. I could just I could just, I could just play them, I could just, I could just play them right now. Joel, <laughs> uh, on a similar topic, I can't believe I bothered buying Metal Gear Strive. Metal Gear, Guilty Gear Strive. Whoa! <laughs> what? Yeah, I, you you like, regret it? You regret I, it? I regret buying it as of now because I haven't opened the thing. I I haven't you started re- the application yet. You regret it? No, I regret re- not waiting wanna, until wanna, I'm actually, you, you, until you know, I can, actually play the game. We could wrap game. this up and we could just like go play it right now. You could. I yeah, but you've, got, you've gotten a lead on me. I I need some time to catch up. <laughs> I've played an hour. Let's go. Joel. Okay. All right. I'll put in two hours this weekend. Then we'll we'll meet up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Getty. If you couldn't tell, I didn't play anything or watch anything all week. So hopefully this next weekend, I'll be able to do something. I don't know. Do you want, do you want to hang out? Do I want to hang out? No. I kind of want to pretend like I don't exist so that my family can't ask me to hang out either. <laughs> Damn it. I mean, you keep hanging out with your sister, and you never hang out with me. It and is she's kind like, of Father's Day weekend. Is that a, is that a thing? It is. Yeah. The whole Actually, weekend. The whole well, Sunday. <laughs> uh, it's the whole Sunday. If you can milk it, you can get Friday and Saturday in there too. Yeah, by, by the time we're fifty, it'll be Father's Month. <laughs> uh, Alec, what's your one last thing? Well, as I've lamented to you guys in our chat. My Windows is screwed right now. I don't know why. I have a theory. But I'm going to spend this week either fixing it or Hmm. making Linux run like I want it to. Which it already is most of the way there. So maybe I'll just play games. And woodwork. Because I got got, uh, an angle grinder. He's got the woods. I do have the woods. And the meats? I have the meats. meats. Okay. Got meat sweat. He's like Arby's over there, <laughs> talking through the meat. There he goes. Uh. Also, can I? Uh, okay, I, Getty always makes fun of me because I do double one last thing sometimes. Joel, I watched, I watched the history of of Guilty Gear, not how it's made, the stories mm-hmm. of Guilty Gear and the history and the lore. It was six hours, and I watched it all, and it is awesome, and it is bonkers. And I love it, and I and I, I'm into it now. I'm into these characters. All this extra time he has, Ta- time you enjoy is time not wasted. I yeah. watch it before yeah. bed. I watch like a half an hour before bed. Uh, I have to go through Cub Scout training. <laughs> I, I would, uh, that. I would shame you more, but like I've been regressing and going backwards in time on, on TV shows. <laughs> we we started with the. Uh, Dick Van Dyke not too long ago. We're at I Love Lucy now. Uh, who sees? Who knows where we'll go next? Ooh. Do you have some explaining to do? The Honeymooners? The Jeffersons? I don't have familiarity with them, so I, I think that's my stopping point. <laughs> where's, uh, where's, uh, was it the Fonzie come in? Happy Days. Uh, happy we are, Days. We are not a Happy Days family. Wow. Hmm. We were, uh, we were Nick at Night people. I didn't like who's the boss. Who is the boss? Me. Not me. Is it Tony Danza? I guys to do shit. 
I'm pretty sure it's um uh, Oh god, what is his name? Mr. Belvedere. No, no, Ooh. no. He he's this uh emo musician that was on there for a season or something. Alex Arona? Yeah, I like Webster. <laughs> yep. Webster was cool. God, I'm gonna and that- remember it as soon as we're done recording and punch myself in the face. That will be it for this week's Super GG Radio. Before we go, you can find us on Twitter at Super GG Radio and twitch.tv slash Super GG Radio, where you have me streaming Frog Fractions on Sundays, Multiplayer Monday, no, uh, Metroidvania Mondays, 2D Tuesdays, Nothing on Wednesday, Podcast Thursdays, Metal Gear Fridays is officially complete. He will be on next week's episode, so get in there. Uh, but we will be. Uh, he, I think he wanted, He was talking either Mass Effect or possibly Pokemon. He, like he's trying to find a new series to like dig deep into that he's not familiar with at all. Just go, you know, like a complete free playthrough without any information. And he was thinking about either Pokemon or like Hitman. So, what about like uh, Silent I tried, Hill? I tried or Yakuza. He said no. Get into some horror stuff. Ooh. Is he into horror games? I could ask him. He was going to do Mass Effect, but uh, then his his partner already beat all of them. Mm. Like, she went through all of them within, like, two weeks. (laughs) Anyway, if you'd like to reach us with questions or input, our email address is mail at superggradio.com and provide a review on iTunes or that Alex didn't offer a free Febreze plug-in of your choice. Is there... I don't... Oh, no. I'm not going to... (laughs) No. Thanks for listening. GG Joel. Good game. GG Getty. GG. GG Alec. Good game. Good night, everybody. <laughs>